Well, hello, 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 my Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising signs. How you doing today? Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this full moon in Cancer until a uh, new moon in Aquarius, uh, January 2020. Uh, we are looking at uh, the full moon on January 10th, going to the new moon on January 24th, exactly 14 days, which is exactly how it's supposed to go. Uh, I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, and president of Drawing the Circle Productions, really Happy to be here reading for you today, particularly this one, because I am Leo Rising. Yeah, I'm a Virgo, so the next one uh, I <laughs> will have me in it. But thankfully, then I have a nice stretch until my Pisces moon, right? At least I don't have to do my Libra, my Venus and Libra, right? It's only Sun, Moon, Rising this time. Uh, which is to say that this is a general read, right? It might have me in it, might not, right? There are plenty of times I've done readings uh, with my own signs, and I'm like, oh, I'll watch it back in edits, you know, because I try not to interpret it for myself as I go. Sometimes that's impossible when it smacks you in the third eye, right? Uh, but uh, that's really the guidance. It's like, take what resonates, which is why I do sun, moon, rising signs, so that you can get pieces of the puzzle, right? Put it together for yourself. And particularly for these, uh, when I do find that, uh, that it resonates for me, I put it in my watch later. <laughs> it's like, let's keep an eye on that because this is tracking a two-week period. Uh, because of what do I need read is really about with uh, a grace of humility, right? Saying, I don't know what I need. Yeah, I got to go to work. I got to breathe. I got to eat. I got to poop. <laughs> I got to sleep. We, we all know what we need in basic food, clothing, shelter, right? Stuff like that. Uh, but what do I need, uh, in not just in general, but what do I need in a waning moon? Like, what do I need to look at? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to heal? What do I need to alchemize? And really, let's face it, waning moon is a bit trickier than waxing, right? So as a witch, I know, it's like those three days before new moon. I want the world to know. It's called dark moon, right? It's the death period before the rebirth of new moon. So just helpful, right? Helpful to have uh, some hints, some tips, some tricks along the way. So that's what these readings are for. Please remember to breathe, though, because these can be a little triggery when we're talking about, you know, the darker the waning side, right? The the dissolution, the erosion side of the cycle. Thank you. That's a great way of saying that, whoever that was, the erosion part of it. Because uh, we hate erosion and love renewal unless you have it the other way around. But both are necessary. Here's how it works. So uh, please do remember to breathe if you get triggered, right? It's it's telling it when you get triggered, we all want to like blame the person who triggers us. Don't blame the messenger, right? Don't kill the messenger. It's actually a great gift when you get triggered because it's it's your your energy field, your intuition telling you, pay attention to this. And just because it feels bad doesn't mean that it has to play out that bad, right? It's like you want an alarm to go off so that you can do what is necessary, right? Uh, like to exit the building or put out the fire or whatever. Cool, cool. Lastly, please do like and subscribe if you're new to my channel because I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. We're coming along. Uh, pretty well. Like, I didn't have to pay anybody off, right? I see, but I've had some offers here. Yeah, pay me this much money, I'll get you. I'm like, mm, thank you, no. I'm a Virgo. I don't mind working for it, just how I am. Uh, so, uh, the promise being that <laughs> to my subscribers, that when I get, you know, a little over 1,000 subscribers and I can do super live chat, make some money uh, doing that. How fun is that? I, this is what I do for a living. Uh, that I will do Drunk Tarot at least once a month for the first couple of months. And uh, the first video link underneath the description in the description box uh, will be a video that I did clarifying what Drunk Tarot is. Great fun. Don't do it that often. So it'll be fun for me to do it uh, for you all on Super Live Chat. Cool, cool. Let's get to work. Take a nice deep breath, my Leos. <sighs> because when we're all being aware of our breath, we're in the present moment, right? the most ancient and cheapest form of meditation ever. Plus we're then really breathing in the grace, the guidance, the chi, the prana, the divine, whatever, that's guiding the reading, right? So while you're doing it and I'm doing it, we're sinking ourselves to the same source energy. So while I'm translating it clairvoyant empathically, uh, you are actually <laughs> breathing it on the inside as well. So it's kind of a holographic uh, surround sound vibrational deal. Not oh, cool, here we go. Ah, oh, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, one card. Whoa, no, no flippers. Please, one card for this Leo collective. 
Sun, moon, rising sign. What do we need? Because I'm one of them. I am the arising. So what do we need for this uh, full moon in Cancer to new moon next in Aquarius, January 2020? Using the... Do uh, the <laughs> wrong deck. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards for the dominant archetype or soul power we will be dealing with. The one we need to deal with this uh, full moon to new moon next. Well, it couldn't be more appropriate for a waning moon, the destroyer archetype. Now, don't freak out. Think of the the, the uh, digestive system, right? It needs to destroy the the protein cell walls in order to extract the, uh, the nutrients, right? So necessary, talk about erosion, right? So I'm gonna read this. Keep in mind, all archetypes are uh, neutral, shadow and light, lead and gold. They balance themselves out. In a waning moon, you wanna focus on what the shadow is so that you can bring it into light, like go through the, di the dying process in order to be reborn. Lead has three more atoms than gold. I know, you'd think gold would have more atoms than lead, but no, lead is toxic, gold is healing. So that idea of releasing those three atoms very symbolically uh, played out in, in, in alchemy, right? So let me read you this. The shadow attribute, intoxication with destructive power, and we are seeing that all over the world externally. So we have to sort of address it within ourselves personally, like internally, particularly as Leos, all that creativity can be turned to destructive energy in the blink of an eye. You know what I mean. Uh, destroying others' dreams or potentials, right? Just like pissing in people's Cheerios, right? Not fun. So to destroy somebody's dreams, right? To destroy somebody's potential, very, very toxic, particularly when it's our own. Like it's easy enough to do it for others. How easy is it to do it for ourselves on a bad day, right? Keep an eye on that. Uh, the light side, what we're shooting for, releasing what is potentially destructive, right? It's waning moon. It's releasing what is potentially destructive. An inner child tantrum, right? It's not that you send the kid to its room. You let the child tantrum inside of you. Nobody else knows what's going on. You're hearing its voice. You're feeling its pain, which is rarely about what's going on in the present moment anyway. That's what triggers are. Just because someone, something, steps on your hidden landmine that you didn't know about, don't blame the one who stepped on the landmine. It's your landmine. In other words, yeah, when I was five years old, I didn't know how to deal with that rage and emotion. So they gave me cake and I ate it and it was wonderful and I forgot about the emotion and whoop, into the cell tissue I went until decades later, right? Somebody stepped on the, the cake landmine and poof, explosion, right? So uh, releasing what is potentially destructive in a healthy therapeutic way, inner child work seems to be the best for me. Everyone's gonna find their own way, right? Uh, preparing for new life. Preparing for new life, literally <laughs> the dark moon before new moon or the erosion before uh, renewal. Very cool, very on the nose, loving it. What the master told me to do uh, for the second deck, we're only doing uh, six cards, one uh, from six different decks, was to take half of the Chuck Spisano love pack, and it's the problem suit, the suit of problems, as I call it, the Debbie Downer Womp Womp deck, Womp Womp, because it is Waning Moon, to really key into that shadow attribute and how it may manifest within you. And by the way, uh, even if that's not your archetype, you might be dealing with someone who's a destroyer. So we'll, we'll get a better idea as the cards hit the table, right? So please breathe. Whew, I'm feeling this one. My masters, please, one card in clarity for this Leo Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. Dealing with the destroyer archetype within themselves, within someone else, within the world. What do they need? What is their own little insight? What is their own pin code? Their own energetic entree, right? Entry into this destroyer archetype for this uh, full moon in Cancer. Very emotional to new moon next in Aquarius, very transcendent, please. What have you got for us? What do we need? My masters, bad attitude. <laughs> Isn't that all it takes? <laughs> what is an attitude if not a, a, a combination of your thoughts, your beliefs, your triggers, your the atmosphere around you, right? The atmosphere you carry with you, bad attitude. And what's she doing? She's throwing hearts away. She's like, fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you, and you're an asshole, and you're a douchebag, and I hate you. Why? Because there's all this destructive energy built up 
in the energy field and all of it is for our benefit if we learn how to alchemize, right? Sometimes we have to go into the most destructive vibration within ourselves. And yes, I am feeling it as uh, just a sampling, like catching a whiff, whiff of frustration at its lightest, impatience, right? Thinking the emotional guidance scale, Abraham Hicks, right? Frustration, irritation, impatience, down to rage, right? Down into vengeance, right? That whole uh, destroyer vibe. Keep an eye on your bad attitude, right? Because at a certain point, it is a choice. Like, what you're feeling may not be a choice, you can choose, you can respond, you know, like I said, love, it's okay, it's okay, we're not gonna act on this, we're just gonna breathe through it, we're not trying to push it down anymore, we're gonna let it come up like the volcano, but we're gonna channel that energy in healthy ways, right? So uh, attitude usually has to do with the mental aspect of it. So keep an eye on your thoughts, right? Don't censor them, but don't text them. Don't, don't blast them all over social media, right? Don't let the child drive the car when it's angry or sad, but when it's happy, that's the innocence of your heart and your soul that wants to come out and love everybody, which still needs you to guard it so it doesn't, you know, you know, <laughs> we've been to, we've all been to that party. So let's move on. Let's ask the angels uh, with the Doreen Virtue Healing with the Angels Oracle. Nice deep breath. Oh, the celestial is so wonderful. And I love working with fire signs because they're usually associated with Archangel Michael. <laughs> Everybody loves Archangel Michael. I'm at Earth sign. We got Archangel Uriel. Archangel Uriel is the Mack truck of the Archangels, the guardian of the gates of Tartarus. <laughs> That's going back a long way. Before there was hell, before they called it hell, it was just one section of the underworld. Now the whole underworld is, no, it's not. Not once you've been to the Elysian Fields a few times. Lovely. Nice deep breath, my Leos. Oh, my angels, please. One card in clarity for this Leo collective sun, moon, rising sign. What do we need for this new moon in Cancer to uh, this uh, full moon in Cancer to new moon in Aquarius, January 2020? We've got the destroyer archetype with a bad attitude. Seems to go hand in glove. So please, my angels, from your larger celestial perspective, what do we need? Harmony. <laughs> Harmony. Now remember, uh, like I studied music. I can't play piano worth a shit, but I took the lessons. They were horrible. I couldn't even get past Willie the Whale. It was really bad. Three blind mice I could do, but heart and soul, no coordination. Oh yeah, over a beautiful singing voice, <laughs> which really should have stuck with that. Um, so harmony, two notes right next to each other look like they would be in harmony because they're right next to each other on the scale. They're not, they're dissonant. There needs to be space, right? So what is that space between your awareness as a divine being in a body and this destructive energy? What is that space? It is that space of, it's okay, honey. I love you. It's okay to feel this. I love you. It's okay. Thank you for letting me know you feel this way. It's, you talk to the rage, to the emotion, to the frustration, whatever it is, this destructive energy. I want to kill myself. I want to kill somebody. I'm fucking... It's okay, honey. It's all right. We're, you're all inflamed right now, right? It's like an inflamed nervous system overload, right? Too much, too much, too much. You talk to it like a five-year-old child. You don't give it therapeutic language. Well, well, you know your shadow is, but the kid's gonna be like, fuck you, right? Uh, nor do you give it spiritual language. Well, you know, where blah, 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 blah. Be honest, be real. I get why you feel this way. Of course, with what we're seeing, you feel this way. I love you, sweetheart. That's how you bring things into harmony, by giving it space. Even if you can't give it the, don't give it free reign to act, Give it free reign to feel, but sometimes that's like a quarter of an inch at a time, like then another quarter inch. It's like, it's okay. Breathe, sweetheart. I'm here. I love you. And by all means, reach out and ask for help. This is a spiritual counseling thing I do with people pretty much every day. Um, friends calling me up out of nowhere, as well as clients that, you know, I get paid to do it an hour session, sometimes half hour. I'll call it a half hour of power if somebody just needs a little, uh, a, a little, uh, a, a little tweak here and there, right? I help people come into harmony with their feelings, no matter what the feelings are. It's not just about being in harmony with the feelings that feel good, right? It's, it's 
it's like giving ice in winter. I mean, it's like you kind of have to, you just have to uh, come into harmony with the destructive tendencies because it's like an arrow being pulled down so far on the bow into the negative that when it releases, we can skyrocket, right, into the highest vibrations. It is sort of like uh, an exorcism or if you like a really good burp, right? Like you feel the pressure of it and then blah, ah, the sense of relief. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get a Daughters of the Moon Tarot. To give you at least one tarot card here, uh, this is usually the voices of the goddesses, right? Like the Divine Feminine Collective. Uh, but not using the Mythic Tarot, which I usually use for the gods. So this is both the gods and the goddesses uh, from that level of consciousness, giving us uh, a little clarity, right? Nice deep breath for the gods and goddesses, please. <sighs> Oh, one more. Well, that was a good one. Oh, my gods and goddesses, my goddesses and gods, please. One card for this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. What do we need for this full moon in Cancer to the new moon in Aquarius, please? Considering we've got the Destroyer and we've got Bad Attitude and we've got the angels talking about harmony. My gods and goddesses, please. What do we need? What do we need to look at? Give us a piece of the story. Ace of Cups, happiness. So there's definite, well, the card is called happiness, but it is kind of saying that this destructive attitude, this destructive destroyer bad attitude with the harmony of it can give you a seed of happiness. Now, is that being happy about being destructive or being a destroyer? Well, if like in the light side, preparing for new life, right? Sort of like, um, well, like in January, January of last year, I, I watched uh, Tidying with Marie Kondo on uh, Netflix. That was a year ago, right? And so I Marie Kondoed the house, right? I got rid of a lot of stuff. Well, uh, I'm doing it again, right? So in a way, that's sort of like, let's clear out, let's get rid of everything that does not spark joy, that does not torch joy at this point to make more room for the new to come in. It's sort of like that emotionally where you can really get into, yeah, okay, I'm feeling this, but I am releasing patterns from my cell tissue, releasing destructive energies from my ancestors going back to who knows when, right? When you really start studying healing and, and who we really are on the spiritual path, we are souls that were chosen to play the roles of the bodies and the personalities that we're in. So it's really not our stuff on a soul level. It's the stuff that's in the body, that's in the character, that's written into the script. So to get that there's a new beginning, an ace of cups involved in all of this, that new moon should be really, really happy, one would think, getting to that Aquarian place. And let's face it, Aquarius, though an air sign, is transcendent, fixed air, the stratosphere. So perhaps we do go from that really deep, dark, volcanic, turbulent place to a place of that placidity being placid, sorry, my vocabulary, uh, I was raised by a teacher, what do you want? Uh, to get that higher perspective, then that our natural state of happiness can then rise. It's lovely. Let's clarify that with the voices of the higher selves, mine included. I am Leah Rising, as I keep saying. Can't you tell I got purple hair? <laughs> Leah Rising. Uh, thank God. Otherwise, Virgo with Pisces Moon, I wouldn't fucking leave the house. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get a Whisper of Love from the Whisper of Love Oracle deck. Love this deck. Nice deep breath, please. Oh, the higher selves of all involved. Mine included. Hi, Mark 5. That's what I call him, the fifth dimensional me. Hi, Mark 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and upwards. Please, one card for this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising signs for this full moon in Cancer, January 10th to new moon in Aquarius, January 24th. Please, what do we need? Considering the destroyer, the bad attitude, harmony, and the one of cups, the ace of cups, happiness, what is our whisper of love? Higher selves. New love. Ace of Cups, often considered the card of new love, or at least like an introduction, like someone offers their cup, right? And then the Two of Cups is you sort of receiving it, right? at least reciprocal attraction. Uh, new love, embrace this new opportunity of love that is here. This may pertain to work opportunities or spiritual growth, and how much you want to bet. It's about alchemizing 
this destructive bad attitude through harmony, right? Harmonizing with it, as we discussed. Um, you know, and nobody else needs to know about it, Leo. As we know how prideful we can be. Like, nobody needs to watch this. I said to my mom, it's like, yeah, when I go through a rough period, I don't mind people know that I'm doing it, but nobody needs to fucking witness it either, right? I <laughs> do. Virgo, choo -choo 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 -choo. close the gates, close the blinds, raise the drawbridge, right? So, uh, so there's a new love that comes out of this, and maybe it's a new love for ourselves, or what they're showing me is as we sort of volcano out the old... Uh, repressed stuff that it makes room for this new love to come in and maybe that does come in as a person place thing or experience a noun of some sort to mirror that to tune us to that or maybe it's just a new love of self which honestly loving yourself is the only way through it just really is because no matter what comes and that's what I say to my child every day particularly when he's going through grief like for instance this past year I learned that grief is nothing more than love that doesn't know where to go because the person place or thing is no longer there right distance death divorce doesn't matter right it's like I love you I love you well, no matter what comes no matter what goes it's okay for you to grieve this and then the tears that come are so intense but then with that cleansing breath comes this placidity, there's that word again, that peace. Uh, loving yourself is really the only way through. So, you know, people say, love yourself, you gotta love yourself, because if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love anybody else? Gonna get an amen. Thank you, St. RuPaul of the, the Drag Race. Uh, well, how do you do that? I love you. You be honest. You talk, it's inner child work. Luckily, we are ending with the new deck, the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. Very exciting. I've had it well, I guess I've had it for a bit, almost a month now. Yeah, it came out the beginning of December. We are the beginning of January. I love this deck. They are my uh, my lightsabers in cardboard form. <laughs> I love them. One side of uh, each card is the name of a mantra. The other side is the mantra itself. And then in the little booklet, there's some really good insight that he adds. I love Matt Kahn. He's great. Never met him. Not taking any money from him. But we don't know each other. I just know of him. Uh, his YouTube channel. Before he was a Hay House author, he was kicking ass on YouTube, still is. Uh, Matt Khan, K H N, all for love. Matt Khan, all for love. Go check out his shit. He's good. And he curses every now and again. And he's funny. I love him. Oh, West Coasters, bless their hearts. We're going to ask the Ascended Masters, like we did with this bad attitude <laughs> card. We're double dipping on the Masters. Let's do this. This is fun. Nice deep breath. Yes, even with a destroyer attitude, <laughs> the destructive destroyer bad attitude, we could find some fun and some humor in that little spoonful of sugar to make the lava go down or up. Breathe. Oh, my ascended masters, please, one card in clarity for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs. What do we need? What is the healing mantra we need for this full moon in Cancer to the new moon in Aquarius, considering the destroyer, bad attitude, harmony, happiness, and new love? What a fucking mixed bag. What is the healing mantra that would best serve us? What is the healing mantra that we need? My Ascended Masters. I'll take that. That one flew out. Amplifying Abundance. Amplifying Abundance is the name of the mantra. Now, before I read what the mantra is, keep in mind, mantras and affirmations may look alike. These are in English. I'm so used to mantras in Sanskrit. Oh, I did every single Oprah Chopra 21-day meditation challenge there was. Love them. Wrote them all down. Love it. Because my mind, I'm very I'm verbal, very linguistic. I'm a cunning linguist. <laughs> Not since I was a teenager. Uh, it's a whole other bag of story. Uh, heterosexual, whatever. Uh, I, my mind can't take a Sanskrit word and play with it. It can with English. So know that an affirmation is about taking a statement of truth and sort of uh, trying to agree with it, right? Using it, repeating it over and over and over again. And I did so many freaking affirmations in the 80s. I thought I was going to go blind just from writing them, right? I even wrote them on mirrors with lipstick. I borrowed some. You know, eyeliner, uh, pencil works. Eyeliner, eyebrow, pencil works just as well. Um, but in English, a mantra, it's like saying a code. Like, it's taking these soul truths and running them through your cell tissue. The more you do them, it's like... Yeah, I guess sort of like conditioning yourself, but bringing yourself, your personality, your cell tissue, your DNA into alignment with a higher vibration. 
little different than an affirmation, an affirmation darling. Uh, so the mantra, abundance is my birthright and I receive it now. Wow, doesn't that sound like a picket, picket line? Abundance is my birthright and I receive it now. It's very Leo, right? Now you put this energy behind that? Abundance is my birthright and I receive it now. Amplifying abundance, not just allowing it, amplifying abundance. This should be good. I haven't had this one yet. Breathe. Abundance is my birthright and I receive it now. When you are abundant, you feel confident that life will always meet your needs, whether things go according to plan or not. Abundance is not a matter of having more than enough but of seeing from the soul's perspective that only your ideas and beliefs can ever limit your experience, which is what a bad attitude is. It's a conglomeration, right, of your ideas and your beliefs. Abundance is a readiness to be supported by the universe in exchange for letting your light shine at full capacity. Harmony <laughs> and happiness. Uh, to really embrace this as a new opportunity for love. Uh, this mantra is ideal for unraveling beliefs of lack and scarcity, which can put anybody in a bad attitude of the destroyer vibe, uh, overcoming fear and increasing confidence. So this destroyer archetype with a, uh, a bad attitude, when allowed to be harmonized, you add that other element of it's okay, it's okay, I hear you, you have every right to feel that way, just let's not let it drive, let's talk this through. You're allowed to feel what you're feeling, but let's keep it, let's keep our conduct, what we say, what we do, in alignment with our highest truth, right? That's our, that's an Ace of Cups moment, it's like we're gonna try and do this differently, but that's gonna bring us some happiness, some transcendence, it's gonna allow us to release some of this destructive energy in a positive way that gives us a new emotional beginning, one of new love, and whether that's new love of someone, some things, some experience, some ideas, some practice, some process, lovely, most likely it's about loving ourselves in a new way, a spiritual growth thing. And that's gonna help us amplify our abundance. Abundance is my birthright and I receive it now. So maybe that abundance isn't so much about money as much as it is about this beginning, right? This ace of cups of new love, that it's an abundance of love that you're gonna take at first like an IV drip, 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 drip. And the more that you affirm that it is my birthright, I receive it now comes faster and faster as you allow more in. And it might be destruction volcano and then another trickle and then another explosion and then a little trickle back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I don't know. Sounds like waning moon to me. Right? It sounds like a full moon to a new moon next, particularly from Cancer, the one of the, the water signs, uh, to Aquarius, that transcendent uh, fixed air uh, above all of us, the stratosphere. Cool, cool. Well, may the Leo Collective Sun, moon, rising signs, be blessed with all that they need this full moon in Cancer to new moon next in Aquarius, that we may grow, that we may heal, that we may become the very best that we can be, creative, good, fortunate, wonderful, shiny, happy Leos holding paws uh, for the well-being of all and the fulfillment of the divine plan. And so it is. Thank you so much for watching, my Leonine brothers and sisters. Always a pleasure to read for you guys. Please do like, subscribe, help me get to 1,000 so that we can have even more fun with Drunk Tarot. And uh, I'll probably easily do a couple of super live chats a week. It's just how I am. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for watching. But for now, may you be blessed with the very, very best. And as ever, hail. Farewell and blessed be. Good clap. <laughs>